Okay, so here, here's a moment of truth. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my SD card as indicated, so upside down. So that's in. While I'm over there, I also want to point out the fact that the USB is different. This looks like a, a micro USB, whereas the Ender 3 Pro used a mini, if I'm not mistaken. I always get those confused, but it's a different connector. So you're probably gonna need a different plug. Um, let's see, so the other thing was I put the filament uh, spool holder on here. Um, one of the things I noticed that is if you leave this out here, that's gonna cause some issues. So the, the um, cable needs to sort of be put off to the side somehow. And um, as other people have pointed out in, in their reviews, this is more versatile, so you can, um, send it back out of the way when you're not printing, um, or you can uh, leave it up so that the path to the extruder is a lot uh, straighter. Uh, but the other nice thing about this, I don't, I didn't see anyone notice, or excuse me, I didn't see anyone else talk about it, was the fact that this is reversible. So if I decide that I wanna put this on the other side of the um, spool holder, I can do so, and it, and it locks into place. So depending on uh, where you want to put this, you can have it um, better tailored to your workspace. Yeah. So of course this will swing out and then the, the spool will be on the inside of the machine versus outside where I just had it. Um, and it's, it's as simple as just tilting up and kind of lifting it out of that top channel in the back there. You can see that it, it's sort of like a hook uh, at the top and then it's just a little... Uh, friction or, or tension lock that, that allows it to stay in. Um, you could even put it on the front if you want to do that. Of course, just make sure that you don't get the cables in the way. Um, and then you basically just lock it down and you can have it so that the spool lines up with the filament runout sensor that way. Um, if you want it to be, um, it just depends on how you want your filament orientated, oriented, orientated. So that way um, it's a little bit easier for you to uh, make your workspace work for you. Uh, and it allows you to put your things in a, in a manner that really uh, fits your, your area. So I'm actually gonna flip this back around, put it back in here. I would say it's a three-quarter turn lock. Um, I can see some bearings, third-party bearings or Thingiverse items to put bearings in there to spin it easier. Um, I never really had too many issues with my my spool spinning, but I did create or I did print one that does have bearings in it, so um, we do have that option. The, um, the next thing I'm going to do is going to take the Creality filament that was included with the printer and I'm gonna cut it at a 45 right there okay take it and put it on the spool holder and I also have the book open because I want to make sure I do this according to um, how they wrote the the procedure, um, just to be sure. You know, I don't want to have any mistakes or any issues. So I'm going to take my filament. Oh God, that's horrible. That is a horrible sound. Put it through the runout sensor. Actually, you know what? I'm going to turn the printer on first because I think that will help. So you turn the printer on. It's actually the first power up. It has a progress bar. And then it starts the fan for the... That particular fan is for the... print head. It sounds kind of loud. I'll have to look at it. But now, you can see when I put the filament in, it lights. When it's not in, it's not lit. So when it's lit, that means there's filament. If it's not lit, that means you're, you've run out, which seems a little contradictory to me. 
let's see if I can get this filament. Oh, look at that. You can use the top of the printer as a camera mount. Awesome. So let's go ahead and get that where it needs to be. Like I mentioned previously, the Creality filament was said not to be very good, but we'll see. So now that we have it through the sensor, let's open that up. I have to twist it a little bit. Yeah, I can see that extruder being a little bit of a problem because it doesn't it doesn't want to go in correctly. You really have to finagle with the filament. Unless I just don't have the technique down yet. Oh god, that sounds horrible. Ugh. All right, let's see if we can do this. I may end up taking apart the, the filament or the uh, extruder just to see what I'm doing wrong because it does not sound like I'm doing it correctly. I know it's unlatched because it's over here. Wow, that was painful, but I did get it in there, so that's good. Let's feed that up to the hot end. I don't know if you can see it in the tube. There it goes right there. Going down to the hot end. Right there it is right there. There it goes. Ah well, who cares if the filament goes in there. Okay, so it feels like it's up to the hot end. So now we'll go through the procedure of leveling it. So according to the official manual, we press level, and then we do auto leveling. Okay. And then there's just a number one. Wait for the nozzle temperature to heat up to 120 degrees Celsius and start leveling. Okay, so I'm gonna wait until 120 degrees and then I'll start the camera back up. It's not gonna take too long. Actually, you know what? I might stay rolling because it's gone five degrees every second or so. But um, so far everything's going well except the extruder. The extruder's not um, quite lined up to where it's easy to put the filament into the, the tube, but I'm sure there's gonna be a, either a fix or someone's gonna point something out to make it a lot easier. At least I hope so. So it looks like we're at 120 degrees. It's auto homing. Oh God, why did I turn the camera? This is gonna cause some problems. So it's going down. <clears throat> and then you should see within the print head, I think it's over on this side, when it touches the bed, the little blue light will indicate that the, uh, the sensor has been tripped. There it is right there. Okay, and then it does a 16 point grid and it touches it twice. And it's actually a little different than the way ABL works. ABL will go from left to right, go down and then right to left and then back again in sort of like a S pattern. Um, and this appears to go in, in more of a, I call it a search grid. Um, where it goes down, up, down, up. So, I mean, it's it's the same thing, just rotated, but it's diff it's different to see because it's not what I'm accustomed to. So it doesn't seem terribly slow. The movement speed is nice. Strain gauge appears to be working. Okay, we're gonna get to the last one. <clears throat> and it goes back to the center. And I'm assuming 
assuming it's done. There's no indication on the screen, so that's hard to tell. Oops. Press back. We have the Z offset that we're not going to change yet until we start printing. Um, we'll go to the prepare. We're going to preheat the PLA. And it looks like it's currently set to 200 degrees and 60 degrees, respectively, for the nozzle and the bed. Um, the filament, let's see if I can take a look at it. I didn't, I didn't happen to notice. The filament is 195 to 220, but there's no bed, there's no bed uh, temperature setting. So that may be a, a moot setting depending on your adhesion techniques and how you print. <clears throat> I can see this as being an, an upgrade that I'd like to do where it's a little bit more uh, suspended and it rolls a little bit easier because there's a lot of friction. Okay, we're at 195 and 42. I do like the fact that they both heat up at the same time versus sometimes where it'll do the nozzle first and then it'll do the bed. I'm not sure if that's a setting within the slicer or not. Um, but while it's preheating, let's go ahead and go to back. And we're actually gonna go to print. And I do have the SD card in there, so I wonder if there's a load option. There's the LED that everyone's been talking about. It turns on a nice blue LED. Not sure how I feel about the blue. I would think white would be a little bit better um, to be able to see. So where is... Nope, not sure what I did there. Where is the SD card? Well, only one way to find out. Level the platform, which we did. <clears throat> Preheating method one. Yep, that's the one that we did, which was the PLA. Method two is you can manually set the temperature, it looks like. When you wait for the temperature to rise, hang the filament over the filament holder. Oh, there's the magic 45 degree cut. Load the filament, okay. Start printing, here we go. This is telling you to install the slicer software. Um, open Creality 3D Slicer, generate G-code. Insert the storage card, click Print Control, and then select the file to be printed. So I wonder if there's no preset models on here. Hmm, interesting. So print. Let's try this. Let's uh, take it out. I was under the impression that they included models for you to print, but I could be wrong. There's absolutely nothing on these pages. Huh. Start printing, insert, click, click, da, da. note for details on the software instructions, okay, start printing. Yeah, we don't get any files at all, so I guess I'm going to have to load something and start it printing. Uh, I will stop here, but for the most part, everything's done. The next video, we'll, we'll look into how to get something printed, and then we'll start printing. Thank you.